Sharon, I need Sharon to call in right now. Sharon, call in the show right now. Because the reads are there, the notes are there. Where is Sharon at? When the accessories like Nini, but then they can't be in church, but then they can't do this. What the fuck? First, when you had the choir director sticking with the with the piano player and she got pregnant all types of shit i'm sorry but is she the one that stole the wig jason ass i'm gonna light your ass up for that one i'm gonna need an ancestry.com because i don't see a bit of fucking puerto rican you're gonna have to get over that we got over that shower curtain in the background you're gonna have to get over bitches going left and right I'm talking about it, you know why because that's the only good pussy he'll ever have in his fucking mouth I'm glad. Instead of running your mouth, run on a fucking treadmill, bitch. How about that? I love when Sharon shows up because Sharon be having the motherfucking notes. She's going to go through them. Go ahead, Sharon. What's up, everybody? It's Queen Sharon in the motherfucking building, and we are back with another episode of Hot Off the Press. You know who I am. Queen Sharon, queen of the messy report. I cover the mess so you don't have to stress because I do it the motherfucking best. Now. Before we even get into anything, I know that I read people a lot. I know that, you know what I'm saying, I'm on some people's asses. I'm going to go ahead and get on my own ass, so don't come for me. I know my nails are fucked up, okay? I literally went to go pick up a box today, underestimated how heavy it was, broke off this nail, this pinky nail lifted all the way up, my whole real nail, and I don't even know if I'm going to be able to get them done, and my birthday is next week. So I'm already pissed about that. So don't come for me. I know my nails are fucked up, but I am still here with broken nails and bruised fingers to bring you guys the mess. Now that we've gotten that out the way, I hope that everybody had a great weekend. You know, I had a good weekend. It was it was kind of a relaxed weekend. It was my nephew's birthday. We went out to dinner, had a good time. It was it was a good weekend. So I hope that everybody else enjoyed their weekend. Now let's get to what we we came here for, the mess. Okay, now, Rihanna's Super Bowl performance. Oh, shit, you're right, Jermere. Let's get into that disclaimer right now, okay? Now, what this disclaimer tells you guys is that I'm going to say what the fuck I want to say, and I have every right to say it legally. If you don't want your kids to hear it, put your kids away now, and do not come for me for anything these are entertainment purposes only. This is for entertainment purposes only. Now, you can read through all the rest, but boom, I'm covered. There we go. All right. Now, you guys, we got a lot we got to dig in today. We got a lot we got to dig into, okay? The first thing that we're going to start off with is Rihanna's Super Bowl performance. Performance. Now, I thought that the performance was amazing. I thought the performance was amazing. I thought that she went up super high in the air. She played, you know, all of the tunes that we, our favorite tunes that we like. Um, and it was also confirmed that she is pregnant. Okay. So she did all of this stuff while pregnant, glowing, still came out there, still committed, did the big reveal. So I thought that it was amazing. Now, I also want to clarify one thing. Last week, I misspoke. Now, you know, this is hot off the press and we bring you the mess, but we're going to bring you the real mess. So I misquoted myself, okay? I misspoke. I said that Rihanna was three months postpartum and Rihanna, in fact, is nine months postpartum and she was three months postpartum when she decided she was going to do the Super Bowl, okay? So my bad, but we correct mistakes if we, if, we, if we have them. So now, like I said, I thought that Rihanna's Super Bowl performance was amazing. However, we did have some people, y'all, we're going to get into it today. Just work with me. Work with me. We, we, we we're going to... We're going to dissect this. It's just going to flow. It's going to flow along. So there were some people that did not uh, agree that Rihanna's performance was all that great. Okay. Here we have uh, Bethany Frankel. Now, Bethany Frankel, if you guys are uh, a fan of The Real Housewives, she was a former cast member of The Real Housewives uh, New York City. Okay. Um, she had something to say. Bethany Frankel, here's what she had to say. You guys know I got my notes. She said, 
While I love Rihanna, her vibe, songs, and fashion, Frankel was much less inspired by her than Pink as a performer. But Rihanna was also touching up her face with her makeup and her whole entire makeup brand flew and paid for all these influencers to go to the Super Bowl. And they had their own Super Bowl, Bethany Frankel said. Okay, this is what Bethany had to say. Now, I would say that right now, you know, I don't think that Bethany is really staying in her place. You know what I'm saying? That I don't know what other way to say it to you, Bethany, except for you could comment on pink because she's pink. But don't comment on Rihanna. Because she's brown. You know what I'm saying? That's our culture. Stay out of our culture. Leave that to us. Okay? Because you could barely last with your own season on your own talk show. Now, Bethany Franco, she got her own talk show, you guys, and she never even made it to season two. And this is with Ellen DeGeneres, the goddamn talk show queen, working with her on it. And you still couldn't make it to season two. Let's not talk about how Rihanna was all that feet, all those feet up in the air pregnant, but yet, Bethany, you couldn't even be sane and pregnant on Real Housewives of New York without running and give it up, giving it up. So I don't think that this is something that you should even be speaking on, comparing her to Pink. They're two great artists and both have two totally different types of styles. I don't think that that's something that should have even been said or came out of your mouth. And why wouldn't she promote Fenty? That's her brand. That's a boss bitch. Okay, if I if I have a brand and I'm flying out and I'm going to go be around all these thousands and thousands of people, you damn right. Rihanna is a business fucking woman and you damn right she brought Fenty along and it was successful and props to you, Rihanna. Now, we also have some more haters that have things to say. Who's the next person we have, Jameer? Now, we're going to get into this picture in a minute. But this, in case you don't know who this is, this is Howard Stern, a younger Howard Stern at that. Now, let's see what Howard Stern had to say. He said, you know, I don't even know why she bothered showing up, Stern said, but I could be wrong. But in my opinion, 85% of that performance was lip syncing. Now, um, I do know that she had background vocals, as every artist does that performs, right? But I heard her breathing. I heard her breathing. I heard her performing the vocals different than what they sounded in the song. And I thought that Rihanna uh, did her thing with the singing. I mean, what the fuck do you guys want? Uh, you're a male, Howard Stern. You don't know what the fuck it feels like to have a baby pushing in on your ribs and trying to catch your breath. And this girl, woman, sat there and went from one place to the next place, up in the air, down, all of that. So I don't think that you have a reason or, or a means to even say anything. I also don't think that you should be commenting on us brown people because it's evident that you don't like us brown people. Can we put that picture back up, Jameer? This is a picture of Howard Stern in blackface, okay? Disrespectful to the black community, thinking it's funny, grinning from ear to ear. So I don't think that you should be commenting on motherfucking brown people when you're sitting there and brain it, uh, painting your face brown and it looks like a shit stain is on your fucking face, okay? Now, there also has been allegations, okay? Magic Johnson came out and said that when Howard Stern uh, interviewed him back in the day, it was one of the most racist and uncomfortable interviews that he's ever had. I think you might want to shut the fuck up, Howard Stern, and not comment on us brown people. Now, let's get into the next person that had something to say. Now, this is Goldberg. You know, he's a wrestler. Okay. He said, I thought Rihanna was freaking horrible. Bill Goldberg said during a car, a car cast podcast a few days after the event, I was disgusted by it. That's all. Let's just say that. I thought it was horrible. Okay. Can we put this picture up? And I think it's horrible with you sitting there sweating and getting goddamn body slammed, whatever the fuck that is, by another grown ass man. Okay or flipped, or whatever, I don't know what was going on, I don't know if you the one that got the tidy, tidy blackies on, I don't know, y'all are both bald, but I don't think that that's something that you should have been commenting either, when you can't even fake, that every, everybody knows that wrestling is fake, and you can't even fake good, and again, here was this woman, I would like to see y'all motherfuckers get up on a goddamn platform and levitate, I want to see y'all do some shit like that, Bottom line is leave Rihanna alone. Leave her alone. Leave her alone. Leave her alone. 
You a bad bitch, Rihanna. You a bad bitch. Let's go on to the next topic. Next topic on the docket. Okay, Haley Bailey and DDG. This is a picture of Haley Bailey, who is dating currently dating DDG, who's in the middle, and DDG's ex, Ruby Rose. Now, it was reported that allegedly Haley and DDG had broken up. Okay, and during that breakup, during that millisecond breakup, DDG slipped into Ruby Rose's DMs. Ruby Rose decided to expose DDG and. This is this is exactly what was said. Hold on, you guys. You know, I got to make sure I'm on my. OK, OK, I had to get back to it. All right. Haley Bailey and DDG began trending on social media when fans found out that they unfollowed one another on social media. Fans quickly took it as them breaking up. However, DDG's ex rapper, Rup- <laughs> If you want to call her rapper, Ruby Rose added fuel to the fire when she tweeted a message writing, having your bitch wear my clothes is crazy. Laugh out loud. Alluding to a shirt the Little Mermaid actress was seen wearing on Instagram. Ruby then clarified her tweet, saying that it wasn't supposed to be a dig at Holly. And she said, I like Holly. DDG, a weirdo, though, for sure. She tweeted, I can't keep up with this shit and reading how these motherfucking young folks be reading it, typing this shit and reading it. Anyway, if you look at this picture... Right here on the right, you got Ruby Rose, and you have Haley here on the left, and you see that they do have on the same shirt, and this is what Ruby Rose was alluding to, okay? Now, let's go ahead and show the DMs. Now, you guys can sit there and screenshot and zoom into that motherfucker. That shit is small as hell, but I'm going to do the best I can. He said, you still in L.A.? She said, yeah. He said, what you want? She said, getting ready. How about you? You hitting me the day y'all argue, it's so you laugh out loud. And he said, laugh out loud, you right. Let me go heal for, what, look. He slipped in her DMs. He slipped in her motherfucking DMs, okay? So here you have Ruby Rose that is now announcing that DDG slipped into Haley's, uh, or I'm sorry, DDG slipped into Ruby Rose's DMs, and this is what Haley had to say. Nope, that ain't it. Okay, the devil is working. Laugh out loud. Please don't feed into the lies, especially from a third party. Stay blessed, everyone. Now, in my opinion, I think that this is uh, dick writing for clout. And no, no, Jameer, we ain't ready for that. We're not ready for that. But this is dick riding for clout at its finest. I feel like you didn't do it for the girls. You didn't do it to help Holly out. You exposed them. You put it out there on the internet. I feel like technically if they was on a break, they was on a break for a minute, he didn't do nothing wrong. So her trying to sit there and expose DDG didn't do anything, but let Haley know that he was so heartbroken that he snuck into, that he creeped into Ruby uh, Rose's DMs, but I think that this is Ruby Rose just clout chasing because there's no reason. And of course, your rapping ain't hitting. I didn't even know you was a fucking rapper. Okay, beautiful girl, beautiful girl, but just one of those clout chasing hoes that does whatever she could do to keep her name in social media. And I feel like Haley, you're bigger than this. You're better than this. You're with your man. Y'all stick together. Y'all do y'all's thing, and you got so much stuff that's coming up and that's happening. Now let's show the picture of her. Okay, uh, with the Little Mermaid. Now, Haley is the Black Little Mermaid. I say that again. She is the Black Little Mermaid. Haley, don't be worried about these Instagram bitches. Do not be worried about these Instagram hoes. You do what you need to do. Don't get boggled down by it. I thought that Haley's response was mature. I thought that it was classy. And I thought that she did what she needed to do. Now, let's go to the next topic. Speaking of Haley, we got another, we got our sister that's also in the news. I don't know why Jameer chose this photo. I I don't, I have no idea why Jameer chose this photo. Yeah, I don't know. It just threw me off guard. Like I knew it just threw me off guard. Like the ass just, it, it threw me off guard. But anyway, Chloe Bailey and Chris Brown are having backlash. So fan slam Chloe Bailey after she announced that her next single, How Does It Feel, will be featured, will 
featured controversial singer Chris Brown. Bailey was immediately met with backlash from fans who questioned why she would collaborate with someone who has been accused of violence against women several times. We're failing black women in music if they feel like they have to collaborate with a known abuser in order to chart, one critic tweeted. Now, here's what I feel about Chloe collabing with, with Chris Brown. I, th I think it's a good thing. I think it's a good thing. You know, Chris Brown is a dope artist. He is. Um, and I really feel like, who the fuck is checking for Chloe? I mean, you tell me. I don't hear nobody saying, let me go listen to some Chloe Bailey music. You know what I'm saying? So I think that her collabing with Chris Brown, I, I don't I don't see anything wrong with it. And I feel like I'm against cancel culture. I feel like this man committed a crime. It was a horrible crime. I feel like Rihanna has forgiven him. And what people don't understand is every time that they are bringing this up, they're bringing up a fresh wound for Rihanna as well. I feel like we need to just let it lay, let it rest, and then let's move on. Okay? Now, Let's look at what you guys had to say about Chris Brown collabing. It said, Chloe's Bailey management has no idea, I, I, no idea who her target audience is, and that's why they make such poor decisions and have her all over the place. The people who like her do not like CB. I really don't understand why the R&B girls keep setting themselves up by working with Chris Brown. When has it ever worked out in their favor? It didn't work out for Tanashi and it backfired for Normani and Zendaya. Like Chloe Girl, be serious. Mm. Now, this is from Keely Williams. We're going to get into this in a minute. It says, let him come out with his own record. So genius, so captivating that it makes us all forget he beats women. He can't, so he won't. So, what does he do? He slowly creeps back into the mainstream by getting small nods for features on Black women's marriage. Black women who are more. Mm. Well, that is what Keely Brown had to say. Now, for those of you that don't know who Keely Brown is, she is the former member of the group 3LW. Now, I don't know if you guys know who they are, but this is Keely Williams over here to, all the way to the right. In the middle, we have uh, Notori Naughton. And then on the left, we have Adri Adrian Houghton. I don't know why the fuck their names are so close together. Naughton and Houghton. But I only said it once. I ain't saying it a fuck again. Okay? That's the former group 3LW. Okay? So Keely Williams had a lot of stuff to say about that. You saw what she had to say. Now, Chris Brown decided to respond back to Keely Williams. And here's what Chris Brown had to say. Whew. I'm getting kind of tired of your broken promises, promises. For those of you that don't know, Keely does have a list. Okay, she has a list. Now, what's next, Jameer? What else did Chris Brown have to say? Chris Brown responded, obviously, you are at a point in your life where either you are very broken or broken. The fact you think you have to speak negatively about me makes you look so lame. Your life and career must suck right now. Minding your business would have been best, but I guess you don't have a business or a real job that makes you financially stable. I feel more embarrassed for you in your actual maturity. Jameer, see, he popping shit up on the screen. Jameer, get it, get it off. The girl got a lisp, y'all. She got a lisp. You can't help that she got a lisp. But I will say that if, if you're going to talk shit and have a lisp like Michael, uh, Michael Jackson, like Mike Tyson, you better be able to back that shit up. OK, I think that this was, again, another clout chaser. Keely isn't doing anything. And I really don't understand why Chris Brown even wasted his time responding back to Keely. <sighs> But he did. OK, now we're going to come back to Keely when we address the mess. Uh, I feel like. Let's just continue on. We had a couple of people that Chris Brown decided to call out and say that it was wrong, that he is being crucified for a mistake that he made so many years ago. However, there are tons of white people that have made the same mistake and they are not uh, being uh, penalized like he is and not only white people but somebody else in there will get to that so here's some of the white people that he said has had abuse problems in the past you have Sean Penn Ozzy Osbourne Mel Gibson Nicolas Cage Tommy Lee and uh, Pamela Anderson mm. 
Krishan and Blueface. Mm. There they go again. There they go again, Krishan and Blueface. Now, these are some of the people that he had to, that Chris Brown pointed out that they weren't getting penalized. And I do have to say on this, I do agree. I do think that there are people out there, um, jokes have been made about it. Um, it has been all over the news. And I didn't see these people getting canceled the way that people are trying to cancel Chris Brown. Okay. I don't think that it's fair and that it should be a double standard. But say less, here we go. Blueface had something back to say to Chris, to, to Chris Brown. And here's what Blueface had to say. Here we go, y'all. Cuz you beat up the wrong bitch. I got a bitch. She gonna fight back, so I'm gonna get less time. You feel me? You beat up the bitch that just performed at the Super Bowl. Let me read that one more time. Cuz you beat up the wrong bitch. I got a bitch, she gonna fight back, so I'ma get less time, you feel me? You beat up the bitch that just performed at the Super Bowl. This has gotta be the most ignorant shit I've ever seen in my fucking life. And this is where I do have to agree with Chris Brown because here it is, you know, Chris Brown has paid his debts and he's still, they're still trying to counsel Chris Brown, but here you have somebody that's openly beating on each other. You just heard the nigga sit there and say, I beat my bitch up. I'm going to get less time because she hits me too. But yet they have their own show promoting it and showing the toxicity that they that, that they transfer back and forth. This is a picture right here of Chris Sean and Blueface fighting in the street. They was fighting, slap ass fighting in the street, on the ground fighting. So this is a nigga that has admitted what, what and let me tell you something else. Chris Sean, you a dumb bitch. You a dumb bitch. Ain't no way in hell a nigga will be sitting there talking about me and talking about putting his hands on me and talking about how he got a gutter bitch and all that stuff. And I'm sitting in the background talking about some, you're so annoying. That to me just doesn't make any motherfucking sense. Krishan, I think we've all done told you, you could do better. This man is trying to motherfucking ruin you so that you don't have a career, that you don't have a future because he's not popping without you. For real. I know you got the tat, but you keep the tat, let him go. Okay? You're going to see his face every time you look in the fucking mirror. You don't need him to actually be standing next to you to see his face. But that's just my personal opinion. Now, Chris Brown, by <laughs> sitting here and venting, he has brought scrutiny. He's brought more scrutinizing with his recent rants. And here's what y'all had to say about that. Karuchi literally played the messages with Chris Brown threatening to literally kill her on her voicemail and in text messages for the judge in the courtroom. And that is why she was awarded a five-year permanent restraining order against him. They don't just hand those out. People who defend Chris Brown only bring up Rihanna and how she forgave him. They never mentioned that the restraining order with Karu they never mentioned the restraining order with Karuchi Tran. Him throwing her downstairs punching her in the stomach, and harassment, his colorism, or holding a woman hostage with a gun, etc., says a lot. Now, here's a picture of Chris Brown when he pulled up uh, to the club to confront Karuchi, okay? Um, that, here's a picture of that right there. And I got to say, Chris Brown, I think that maybe you should just lay low. Because while I do think that you are a talented art artist, I think that you are brilliant. I think that you can dance. I think that you can sing. I think you have charisma. We can't ignore the fact that you did do things uh, that was unacceptable. You did put your hands on women. And I know we talk about Rihanna all the time, but Karuchi too. Okay. There's also been other allegations from other women, allegedly, of the abuse that they have received from you. And I think that in this situation, Sweetheart, it may just be better for you to just lay low because you're bringing more heat on yourself, okay? Um, man, that's just so sad. It's so sad to me because I see somebody that has so much potential and 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 I just, I don't know. I, I don't know. I haven't seen really people get canceled, canceled, except for the baby. I think the baby definitely got canceled. But um, they're definitely trying damn, trying damn hard to cancel Chris Brown, you know what I'm saying? But I just feel like I wish people would stop bringing it up. Rihanna is expecting her second baby. She's happy. 
She's in a relationship with ASAP Rocky. They just posed um, for uh, Vogue magazine. Um, so British Vogue magazine. So she's doing her thing. And I just really wish that people would leave it and stop opening those wounds when it comes to Rihanna and Chris Brown. So lay low, lay low, homeboy. I, I, I really think you need to lay low. And pointing out other people and what they've done is fine and dandy. And we agree with you and we understand that. But you can't be the police about it now. The only thing you can do is police your motherfucking self and make sure that you ain't motherfucking beating up no more bitches. Okay? That's what you need to make sure that you worried about, allegedly. You know what I'm saying? Now, whew, let's go into the next thing. We're going to dress the mess. We're going to bring... Hmm, this bitch right here, Ke Keely Williams is back, She's back in the tabloids again, okay? Now, Keely Williams has came out that <sighs> Jameer picks these pictures, you guys. He picks these pictures. Can we show what she has admitted to do, Jameer? Can we show that picture? Here we go. Keely Williams has admitted that she did have a uh, train ran on her by, she, <laughs> I'm just sorry, because did you see how Thomas is looking in that picture? Thomas is looking like, bitch, you nasty. You just let all these niggas run up in you. Oh my gosh. Look at this. Somebody busting it wide open has got damn Thomas just on his way. This before, that's after. Before, after. Thomas, disgusted. But anyway, here we go. Look, Keely Williams admits to getting trained by B2K. After Carlos King asked Keely if she ever dated B2K members, Raz B, she responded, Date is a loose word. I wouldn't give that definition. I think I said entanglement with all of them except for Omari, referring to Omarion. Keely continued, I'm grown. I can admit it. Everybody has their whole day, whole, whole day. Let them have them. We can look back on them days when we're older and be like, yeah, I was out there. Thot, 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 thot. I got kids. I don't care. The host then clarified, so wait, Keely, Fizz, J-Boog, Rasby at the same damn time? And she said only one time, explain, explain Keely. That's totally a one-time thing. Look, everybody got to be young. Everybody got to make mistakes. And mention, okay, and see. <laughs> I'm sorry. And see, I have the giggles because I just, I, I, I can't imagine somebody sitting there and saying I got kids and then following it with, you know what I'm saying? And I, and I, and I let a, a whole group minus one run a train on me. Okay, this is uh, Raz B, J, um, Lil Fizz, and J Bug. Okay, now speaking of Lil Fizz, I don't know if you guys have seen the pictures of Lil Fizz, and he definitely has a Lil Fizz. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know what she got from that, but um, uh, maybe she started with Lil Fizz, couldn't feel Lil Fizz, and then she had to go on to the next one. I don't know. Uh, there's no way I can give you uh, the benefit of a doubt. You a nasty hoe. Bitch, you a nasty hoe. You nasty. You let three niggas run a train on you? You supposed to be the lead singer. You supposed to be the Beyonce on, of the group. You think Beyonce let people run trains on her? Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Now, you guys know back in the day when she was in this group, it was um, alleged that she was being very colorist towards Notori, and they were treating her wrong. It was her and it was Adrian that was treating both of them wrong. Okay, the group, they ended up replacing the Tory. The group ended up uh, breaking apart. They weren't very successful um, after that. Hold on, there's something on my lip. You got me fucked up. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Jameer, I'm trying to see my lip. Okay, y'all see how I did the red for you today? But anyway, uh, so it was said that she was very colorist, very disrespectful, and even tried to fight Notori. Now, Adrian, who is now friends with Notori, they've grown up. She's matured. They have a good friendship. They actually call themselves the 2LW. They have no interest in working with Keely. Also, they want to do a Cheetah Girls reboot. I don't know if you remember that, but Keely and um, Adrian were in a group with Raven Simone. 
and it was called the Cheetah Girls. Well, they want to do a Cheetah Girls reboot, but Raven Simone is also saying that she does not wish to work with Keely anymore. Now, I know somebody that met Keely, and the consensus that I get from what I've heard in the streets, that person that met her, she's a bitch. She's a bitch for no reason. Just high and mighty, uh, I, I, holier than thou. I don't know how you holier, holier than thou. And you letting niggas just run a train on you and bust it wide open. You know what I'm saying? In front of you, Jameer, Jameer, I do not know, you know what I'm saying? How you could be holier than thou and you are uh, choo-choo, okay? I don't know how you, you, you could be doing that. But that is what, you know... Uh, you guys, I'm sorry. I'm just so grossed out. Like, can you imagine it happening and you being like, next, next, next? You know what I'm saying? Like, it just, I don't know. But anyway, she's owning it. Um, you know, everybody, I think, maybe does have the whole days and maybe, but at the same time, at the same time, it just, it, that doesn't, it doesn't make sense to me. Um, so, No, I had to think about three niggas. If I had three of the sexiest niggas and, and would I fuck them at the same time, I still wouldn't let them fuck them. You just a hoe. You just a hoe. That's just what it is. You just a hoe. She's a hoe. Oh, shit. I don't even know if I can do that. I don't even know if I can motherfucking do that. I'm going to end up making myself have to pay. So, you guys, that was addressing the mess today. You guys let me know what you guys think about Keely uh, letting pretty much the whole group except for Omarion, uh, banging her out, even if it was one time you called it an entanglement. Bitch, get the fuck out. That was not an entanglement. They was banging you out. They was banging your whole out. Jameer, can we put the disclaimer up, please? There you go. I just want to sit there and run that one more time, you know, and uh, make sure that that's out there and everybody can see that. Okay, now... Oh, Jesus. Okay. That quickly, I swear we run through these topics like so quickly, but that's it. We're at the end of Hot Off the Press, you guys. But before we go, though, I want to give a shout out to some of the people that had comments to say on the last episode. Who do we got, Jameer? Gotti Fox said, love the show, Ma. Thank you, son. We got AV, great show. We want more. We'll be back next week. Okay. Then we got Betsy Boo. Great show. Them red boots are hideous and they are reselling online for close to 2000 Shake my head. Sorry that the Eagles lost. I ain't no sports fan, but was going to the, the Eagles because they East Coast. Overall, they did play an amazing game. Oh, and by the way, faces beat Queen Sharon. XOXO. Thank you so much, Betsy Boo. Thank you guys so much. And like I said, you guys, this is coming together. It is a work in process. Uh, things are going to become easier. They're going to be more smoother. But in the meantime, I want to thank all of you guys for being on this journey with me and for supporting me. You guys make sure that you are clicking the follow button and that you are liking, sharing, subscribe, let your friends know, come and see the show. Okay. And remember that we tune, that we, our show is every Monday, eight o'clock PM Eastern standard time. Okay. So make sure that you tune in. Okay, every Monday. And you guys know who the fuck I am. I'm Queen Shannon, Queen of the Messy Report. I cover the mess so you don't have to stress because I do it the motherfucking best. I want to thank you guys so much for tuning in to another episode of Hot Off the Press. So until next week, deuces. <laughs>